Hi, I'm Jeffrey Collin, biochemistry student at the University of Ottawa in Canada. Today I will be talking about proximity dependent biotin identification, also known as BioID, and its usage in determining protein interactions. But first, let's talk a little bit about protein interactions in general. As you probably know, proteins are macromolecules that play an enormous role in living organisms. Their functions span from transportation to cell structure, hormones, enzymes, and many others that I won't have the time to name. Basically, life depends on proteins. But for proteins to do their jobs, they need to interact with many other things, including other proteins like themselves. Protein-protein interactions are very important in system biology. They allow us to understand metabolic pathways, signaling pathways, cellular processes, and altogether how life works. A very important example of protein interactions is the cell cycle. During that cycle, cytokase and cyclins mix and match to regulate a variety of other proteins. This makes the cell duplicate, grow, duplicate again, etc. A variety of pathogens affect the cell cycle, and scientists have long been trying to determine how they affect it in order to come up with better cures. Several interaction detection techniques exist. But the two most popular remain yeast to hybrid and coimmunoprecipitation. The general principle is that you have a bait protein and you are trying to find what other proteins interact with it, which we will call praise. For more information on these techniques, check out those links. Also known as vitamin H, biotin is a coenzyme that is covalently attached at the active site of a specific group of proteins called the biotin carboxylases and decarboxylases. Fun fact, it is also used as a skin conditioning agent. The addition of biotin to its target protein is a two-step reaction catalyzed by the biotin protein ligase. In the first step, the biotin molecule is activated by ATP, and in the second step, the activated biotin molecule is attached to a free amine group of the target protein, usually a lysine amino acid. Biotin protein ligases have a very high specificity for their natural targets. Although biotin elation occurs in basically all organisms, less than 5 proteins are naturally biotin elated per organism. In E. coli, Bur A is the name of the biotin protein ligase. It only biotin elates one protein naturally. Quan and Beckett overcame the specificity of Bur A by synthesizing a mutant, R118G that has the capacity of prematurely releasing biotin in its active form. This mutant of Bear A has been called Bear A star and is what was used to develop the BioID technique. The active form of biotin is highly reactive and either quickly biotinylates nearby free amine groups or is quickly hydrolyzed. The biotin molecule has a very strong non-covalent interaction with streptavidine Therefore, using streptavidine beads makes it easy to purify biotin-containing molecules from a crude mixture. But what is BioID? BioID was suggested in 2004 and developed in 2012 by Cal Rue and his collaborators in the US. It is a novel technique to screen for protein-protein interactions. It relies on the fusion through vector cloning of a bait protein, seen as protein A, with Bur A star. However, the fusion of protein A with Bur A star must be done in such a way that the characteristics of protein A are not altered. Protein A has to be able to interact with its ligands, protein B, as it normally would in the cell. To distinguish proteins that are interacting with or are nearby protein A in the cell, as opposed to other proteins that are further away, seen as protein C, biotin and ATP are added to the cell culture media. The presence of Bur A star and ATP will convert biotin into its active form. The activated biotin molecule either gets attached to a lysine of a protein nearby or gets hydrolyzed, thus deactivated. So the closer a protein is to Bur A star, the higher its chances are of getting biotinylated. Biotinylated proteins are isolated using affinity capture with streptavidin beads and the captured proteins can be identified using mass spectrometry. BioID has its advantages. 
biotin-related proteins are practically only going to be proteins that were in proximity or interacting with the bait. This makes it easier to identify them later on. BioID allows both the bait and the prey to be in their natural environment during their interaction. This reduces the risk of environmental incompatibility that might occur if you were using another method. BioID is able to detect weak entrants and interactions. Additionally, BioID is also able to detect a wide variety of baits. However, biotinylation does have its disadvantages. For example, the level of biotinylation of a protein type does not reflect the level of interaction of that protein with the bait. Perhaps that protein just has more or less lysine groups to be biotinylated. Also, low abundance proteins are really difficult to detect with the BioID technique. And also, uh, biotinylation is a permanent modification that might change the behavior of some proteins. Even though BioID is new, it has been extensively used in the last 5 years. For instance, Cal Jeru's team used it to study lamin A, an important structural element of the nuclear envelope of mammalian cells. In the summer of 2015, another group of scientists used BioID to discover proteins that interact with GAG-A. GAG-A is a structural polyprotein that mediates virus assembly of HIV by trafficking to the plasma membrane. You can check out those studies in the links below. Finally, I'd like to thank everybody who helped me out for the making of this video. Especially Jan Jackson for video editing, producing and directing, and uh, Professor Daniel Figgis in the whole class of BCH4300.